After finishing high school and more determined than ever, Blake had the opportunity to preach the national circuit and earn an immediate income. But instead, he chose to invest in his future through education. There were quite a few of his contemporaries that chose not to go to college, but chose to go on the revival road. It must have been difficult to continue to go to college and lug books when your friends are out on the road, evangelizing, getting a name. Charles packed his bags, leaving California and his father's church for Atlanta, Georgia, where he learned that being black can mean having real power. My school was almost totally black. Black professors and university presidents. And that did something for my ego that had a literally transforming effect upon me. I never had occupied a student body office until I went to Atlanta. His school, ITC, elected him to be the uh, student body president. And I had an opportunity to lead our student body to Selma and to Montgomery. We were marching. We came before Jim Clark and his dogs and the patrolmen, and they said, go back to the church. At that point in time, we literally thought that the police were going to attack us and that the dogs were going to be released uh, upon us. We were so caught up in the idea of liberation and freedom, we were willing to really die for what we were fighting for. And once you've come to something that's important enough that you're willing to die for it, it puts the rest of your life in perspective. Once he laid eyes on a lady named May Lawrence, his heart was captured and the search was over. I met Bishop Blake in Denver, Colorado, and I was there with a, at a youth meeting uh, with my parents. Someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, may I speak with you, please? And lo and behold, that was Charles Blake. He didn't know I, I knew May Blake. May Blake was considered to be one of the most beautiful women. She was even voted in her high school as the most beautiful girl. I uh, spoke to some of my girlfriends, and so I said, you know what, he wants to take me out, but I, I don't think I'm going to go. And they said, do you know who that is? Several times and uh, courted her, and we became engaged, and after a year we married. She was such a tremendous compliment to him and has to be a lot of the reason that he has become the person he is today. With the hopes to start a family and build his career, in 1969, Charles returned to San Diego with his new wife and began working again with his father. May was pregnant by the time we left Atlanta, and Kim was born the following Christmas. She was our first child. Kim was, it was daddy's girl. Uh, she's the only girl that I have. Those were tough days for us, but uh, they were wonderful days because we had the newness of relationship and the freshness of family and marriage. And as young people, we toughed it out and just had a wonderful uh, early season in life. And one day, he received a call that would change his life forever. At the end of, of three years, uh, I was invited to take a church in the city of Los Angeles, West Angeles Church. My dad offered me an increase in salary to $95 a week if I would stay with him rather than going to Los Angeles, but I felt it was time for me to go. Living in San Diego, I was not very well known in the city of Los Angeles, and they were reluctant about this stranger coming in to assume uh, leadership. The bishop brought me to the church that Sunday morning, placed his hand on my shoulder and said, I'm going to assign this young man as pastor of this church. Seven men stood and said, Bishop, we don't want to hear it. The bishop said, you seven men sit down. They would not sit down. So the bishop said, everybody stand. <laughs> he prayed the benediction, tapped me on the shoulder and said, it's yours, my boy, and walked out the side door. There were some who opposed for three solid years. We were in court for three solid years. There was controversy. For one period of time, I had a bodyguard that would meet me in the morning, be with me all day, take me home at night because of the physical threats that came against me. Possibly it was good that I did not have just a totally harmonious situation because it developed qualities uh, of courage uh, and persistence that assist me um, even now. He used to get up play the piano, direct the choir, and then preach. He would lead the congregation from the piano, then get up off the piano and, and run over to the, the pulpit and preach from the pulpit, and he did it all. As Charles and May struggled to build the trust and acceptance of their new church family, their own family was growing. 
Charles Blake II was my second child. He was born in 1969. I don't think that God could have given me a better father. I wonder, as a son, or just as a man, can I not measure up to what he's done, but measure up to the kind of man that he has been. Their third child, Lawrence Champion Blake, was born soon after. Uh, I, I know how to respect and love my wife because I watch Bishop Blake love and respect my mother, his wife. And um, I, I thank God for both of my parents because both of them together taught me how to live, taught me how to think, and, and taught me how to love and respect. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Certainly, I come with a heart full of gratitude that the Lord has blessed me to be here in his house. The word was out. West Angeles was the place to be, and they underwent a member explosion that Blake could barely contain. Well, we were up to three services in our small church, and every year we were doubling in size. Our congregation would double. And so in 1976, we started looking for a new site, a new location um, to which we could move. And we incidentally need at least three acres to really do and to build the kind of church that the Lord wants us to build. Yeah. When we started uh, on Crenshaw building the first church, there were many people who really doubted that we had the resources and the will and the ingenuity uh, to do it. And so there were naysayers who said it would never happen. I believe that God's church ought to be in the very best location, <laughs> on the most visible site. We occupied and remodeled an old furniture store. It was a huge building, but it was a furniture store and it was boarded up and dilapidated with holes in the roof. And we purchased those buildings and we remodeled them and came up with what I think was a very beautiful church campus. Someone said that will never be a church, but it's not a bad church. 